It's so beautiful. Such a cool bird. One of my top thrushes, I would say. During the coldest months of the year, the birding landscape is dictated by the type of food available. While birds that eat insects must head south to spend the winter, birds that can feed on seeds still live quite well. Additionally, there's another type of feast that some species take advantage of, fruit. Some particular bird species spend the winter consuming fruit left on trees from the fall, and sometimes trees with a lot of fruit can become havens for birds looking for calories to survive the winter. Today, we're searching for some fruit-eating species rare in our state, with one in particular being our primary focus. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding. Today we are on a trip north to Door County to try to find one of the prettiest birds that only sometimes shows up in the state of Wisconsin, the buried thrush. And we are hoping to find a beautiful male that has been coming to a couple of trees with crab apples on, I believe. Crab apples or berries of some sort. And it seems to show up intermittently, so we're hoping to catch it at the right time and get to see this cool species. And if that goes well, we're gonna to try to find some other northern birds too. Yes, we are super stoked. This was the kind of thing where we, we couldn't make the trip out right away, but the bird's been hanging around. So uh, we're hoping that it continues today. It's been here for a while and it's super pretty. We'll just kind of have to be patient, wait for it to come out, but hopefully it's a great day and then we're able to see uh, some other cool stuff while we're in Door County. It's a cool area, uh, a lot of tourism in the summer, not as much in the winter unless you're a birder. The thrush had been seen in a city called Sturgeon Bay in Door County on the northeastern tip of the state. Door County is a popular tourist destination in summer, but in winter, it plays host to interesting northern bird species more than it does to tourists. As we drove farther north, the brown grass and fields turned into a wintry landscape, and by the time we reached our destination, the sun had even come out. We are pulling up to the thrush spot, and it is bright out here, which is weird because it's been super gloomy the last couple weeks. But it looks like one other person is here, so do you think they're staking out the thrush? I do. It didn't take long for us to find our first interesting species of the day. We pulled up to the spot the buried thrush is being seen at and somebody said that they just had it five minutes ago. And then we got a random sharp chin talk sighting, which is pretty cool because I don't see sharpies that often. And uh, hopefully it didn't spook the buried thrush away, but it was a neat bird to see. So right now we're just playing the waiting game. Um, the lady who was here when we got here said it was here about five minutes ago, which is classic. But she assured us it would be back, which is also, you know, sometimes you hear that and the bird never comes back. But I feel pretty confident that uh, this one should still be around. So we're just waiting in the snow. We waited patiently for the arrival of the buried thrush, spotting many different species in the area. One of the birds we were most excited to see were the purple finches that came to the berry trees to eat. These finches aren't always easy to find in the southern part of the state, and the bright coloration of the males makes them a welcome sight. Wow, all sorts of stuff's happening now. There's a purple finch up there, which is a species that we wanted to see here, and there's a red-bellied woodpecker that's hopping around too. After a longer wait than expected, our orange and blue target bird came into view. Just got the thrush. Took a little while, but it finally popped out onto a branch above the berry tree, so hopefully it'll come down and feed. It's so beautiful. Such a cool bird. One of my top thrushes, I would say. The varied thrush is a striking species with a navy blue back and head, an orange underside, and an orange eyebrow stripe. The blue from the back and head extends around the front of the chest, making a necklace. Females and immature birds of this species look similar to the adult males, but with less vibrant colors. Varied thrushes can be found year-round in the northwestern parts of the continental United States and Canada. In summer, they head north to breed in western Canada and Alaska, as well as parts of the continental U.S. as well. In winter, they spread out south, as well as east, as some individuals end up in the Midwest and sometimes even the northwestern U.S. 
during the spring and summer, buried thrushes eat mostly insects, but during the colder months when insects aren't as available, they switch to eating mostly fruit and nuts. Buried thrush, really neat bird to see. For how colorful it was, it was really easy to lose amongst the berries and all of the branches, so that was interesting, but it was really nice to be able to get this bird. It was looking a little worrisome when it wasn't showing up for a while, but it's all good now. Feeling quite satisfied with our thrush experience, we moved on to our next target species. That stop was solid. You must feel good about yourself. I do. We got the purple finches, the thrush, and we had that sharp shinned hawk that like that's always one you just kind of run into and they're pretty hard to find. I feel like a lot of times people see just like a Cooper's or sharp shin hawk and I feel like sharp shin hawks get overreported personally. Um, so that's always a tough one because you want to be 100% sure and for me I feel like I always end up being like yeah this was a Cooper's. It's so usually a Cooper's. We're going to try some snow bunting spots next. There's a lot more snow here so they're going to be more concentrated on the roads and easier to find than down by us where there's not as much snow right now. We drove the road searching for snow buntings without any luck. At a nearby antique shop, however, we did have a sighting of another target bird. There's That's tiny the roast beaks right here, just off the side of the road. That's awesome. Just as soon as we noticed the gross beaks, they took off over the trees. We headed farther north into Door County, into the charming town of Ephraim. We moved from place to place scanning fruit trees with limited success. These pine gross peaks have been really frustrating because we've had some definite pine gross peaks that we just weren't able to get very good looks at because they took off as soon as we got our cameras ready. And then we just saw some birds take off from some fruit trees that were either bohemian wax wings or their pine gross peaks and they just flew away and we couldn't get a view of them. So it's not been super easy so far, but we have a few more places we're going to recheck and then uh, start heading south. We decided to go back to an inn we had checked once before, this time with a much different result. This is sweet. One of our check back locations paid off, and now we're looking at three pine gross beaks. They uh, doesn't seem to be any mature males in the group, um, which is interesting, but other birders have kind of noted that too. But it's really cool to watch them feed, and they don't seem bothered by us at all. So it's interesting because the pine gross beaks and the bohemian wax wings, like sometimes they seem really skittish, like you won't even be by them, they'll just fly from place to place. And other times they'll just sit there right in front of you. Pine gross beaks are large finches with thick bills. Males are a rosy red color with a gray tail, undertail, and gray wings with white wing bars. Females and immature males are gray with orangey yellow on the head and the base of the tail. Pine gross beaks live throughout the northern hemisphere from Russia to Europe, to North America. In many places, this species stays year-round, but during winter, many individuals move south in search of food. Pine gross beaks feed on fruit, buds, and seeds, as well as the occasional insect or spider. Due to their mostly plant-based diet, these birds are well-equipped to deal with the winters of the north, and can often be seen congregating around fruit trees in small flocks. Pretty sweet, huh? Yeah, they just suddenly stopped feeding. They're just sitting there now. They're little goofballs. It's like they're in a trance. They I just stopped. told you people used to call them mopes because they were so lazy appearing. Right, I mean like 10 minutes ago they looked super active, but now they are just literally just sitting. We just got done checking out the pine gross beaks. So cool to watch them feed. And um, we finally tracked them down. It took a while, so the patience paid off and rechecking those locations definitely helped too. Um, we're gonna go scan the fields again for snow bunting, so that's kind of our second look through the area where they've been seen, so hopefully we'll have the same luck with them that we did with the pine gross beaks. We headed back south the same way we drove up, finding one more target bird we had missed the first time around. What do you think? Pretty sweet. We we got another one. It was on the second time through. And we kind of stopped and took stock of like the area and was like, this looks like a really good spot. So we looked a little further. And then we finally found them way out there. They just look like little black dots. 
And uh, the cows on the right are wondering uh, what we're doing out here, too. Who was the one that said that it looked like a great spot over there? Yep. We watched the absolutely massive flock of snow buntings fly around the field for a while before leaving Door County. It's always fun to find plentiful food sources in winter and see the fascinating bird species that it attracts. We were pleased to get the chance to see some relatively rare winter visitors to our state and eagerly await the next time we get to see them. But until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.